Chapter 15 Which you? Which world? Only you can answer. How to free yourself from limitations. Since your conscious beliefs determine those unconscious functions that bring about your personal experience, your first step is to enlarge those beliefs. The concepts given in this book should have already helped you to do that to some extent. Within your own subjective reality are traces of all those roads not taken, those abilities not used. You may think of yourself as primarily a parent, or mainly in terms of your job or profession. As much as possible, for now, forget the normal familiar light in which you see yourself and consider your identity. Write down or enumerate all of your known physical and mental abilities, whether they have been developed or not, and all of those inclinations toward particular activities, even those only remotely considered, as well as those that have come at all vividly to mind. These represent the varied probable characteristics from which you have chosen to activate your particular main interest. Out of these attributes, therefore, you chose what you now consider to be your hard bed reality. Any of those directions followed can enrich the existence that you know and in turn open up other probabilities that now escape you. The main image that you have of yourself has, to a large extent, also closed your mind to these other probable interests and identifications. If you think in terms of a multidimensional self, then you will realize that you have many more avenues open to expression and fulfillment than you have been using. These probable achievements will lie latent unless you consciously decide to bring them into being. Whatever talents you sense you have can be developed only if you determine to do so. The simple act of decision will then activate the unconscious mechanisms. You, as a personality, regardless of your health, wealth, or circumstances, have a rich variety of probable experience from which to choose. Consciously, you must realize this and seize the direction for your own life. Even if you say, I will go along with all life offers, you are making a conscious decision. If you say, I am powerless to direct my life, you are also making a deliberate choice, and in that case, a limiting one. The path of experience is nowhere settled. There is no one road that does not have avenues to another. There are deep veins of probable actions ever available to you at any given time. Your imagination can be of great value, allowing you to open yourself to such courses. You can then use it to help you bring these into being. If you are poor, you chose that reality from many probable ones that did not involve poverty and that are still open. If you chose illness, again, there is a probable reality ready for initiation in which you choose health. If you are lonely, there are probable friends you refused to meet in the past, but who are readily available. In your mind, therefore, see those probable abilities or events taking place. As you do, the intensity of your desire brings them into your experience. There are no boundaries, again, set about the self. There are literally many other probable yous. You can draw upon their abilities, as in their own way they can call upon your own, for you are all intimately connected. You must realize that you are indeed a probable you. Your experience is the result of beliefs. Your neuronal structure necessitates a certain focus so that other experiences counter to your conscious assumptions remain probable or latent. Alter the beliefs and any probable self can, within certain limitations, be actualized. What you must understand is this. Each of the events in each of your lives was quote-unquote once probable. From a given field of action, then, you choose those happenings that will be physically materialized. This operates in individual and mass terms. Suppose that today your home was robbed. Yesterday, the theft was one of innumerable probable events. I chose such an example because more than one person would have to be involved the victim, and the robber. Why was your home ransacked and not your neighbor's? In one way or another, through your conscious thought, you attracted such an event and drew it from probability into actuality. The occurrence would be an accumulation of energy turned into action and be brought about by corollary beliefs. 
you may be convinced that human nature is evil, or that no one is safe from another's aggression, or that people are motivated mainly by greed. Such beliefs attract their own reality. If you have anything worth losing, you are then automatically convinced that someone else will take it from you, or try their hardest to do so. In your own way, you send out messages to just such a person. On basic levels, your convictions will be quite similar, but one will see himself as the victim, and one as the aggressor. That is, each of you will react differently to the same set of beliefs. However, the two of you are necessary if a crime of that nature is, or is to be, committed. The beliefs of both of you find justification in physical life and only reinforce themselves. The fear of robbers attracts robbers. If you think that men are evil, however, you are often not able to examine that as a belief, but take it as a condition of reality. All of your present experience was drawn from probable reality. During your life, any event must come through your creaturehood with the built-in time recognition that is so largely a part of your neurological structure, so usually there is a lag, a lapse in time, during which your beliefs cause material actualization. When you try to change your convictions in order to change your experience, you also have to first stop the momentum that you have already built up, so to speak. You are changing the messages while the body is used to reacting smoothly, unquestioningly, to a certain set of beliefs. There is a steady even flow in which conscious activity through the neurological structure brings about events, and a familiar pattern of reaction is established. When you alter these conscious beliefs through effort, then a period of time is necessary while the structure learns to adjust to a new preferred situation. If beliefs are changed overnight, comparatively less time is required. In a manner of speaking, each belief can be seen as a powerful station pulling to it from fields of probabilities only those signals to which it is attuned, and blocking out all others. When you set up a new station, there may be some static or bleed-through from an old one for a while. Any ability you have, then, can be, quote-unquote, brought in more clearly, amplified, and become practical rather than probable. But in such a case, you must concentrate upon the attribute, not, for example, upon the fact that you have not used it well thus far. Now, an artist produces a body of work in his lifetime. Each painting is but one materialization, one focused presentation, of an endless variety of probable paintings. The actual work involved in the selection of data is still made according to the beliefs in the artist's conscious mind as to who he is, how good an artist he is, what kind of artist he is, what quote-unquote school of artistic beliefs he subscribes to, his ideas of society and his place in it, and aesthetic and economical values, to name but a few. The same sort of thing operates in the actualization of any event in which you are involved. You create your life, then. Inner images are of great importance to the artist. He tries to project them upon his canvas or board. Again, you are each your own artist, and your inner visualizations become models for other situations and events. The artist utilizes training and mixes his colors in order to give artistic flesh to his painting. The images in your mind draw to themselves all the proper emotional energy and power needed to fill them out as physical events. You can change the picture of your life at any time if only you realize that it is simply the one portrait of yourself that you have created from an unlimited amount of probable ones. The peculiar aspect of your own probable portraits will still be characteristic of you and no other. The abilities, strengths, and variants that you may want to actualize are already latent in your terms and at your disposal. Suppose that you are unhealthy and desire health. If you understand the nature of probabilities, you will not need to pretend to ignore your present situation you will recognize it instead as a probable reality that you have physically materialized. Taking that for granted, you will then begin the process necessary to bring a different probability into physical experience. You will do this by concentrating upon what you want, but feeling no conflict between that and what you have, because one will not contradict the other. Each will be seen as a reflection of belief in daily life. As it took some time to build up your present image with its unhealthy aspects, 
so it may take time to change that picture. But concentration upon the present unhealthy situation will only prolong it. Each condition is as real or unreal as the other. Which you? Which world? You have your choice broadly within certain frameworks that you have chosen as a part of your creaturehood. The past as you think of it and the subconscious again as you think of it have little to do with your present experience outside of your beliefs about them. The past contains for each of you some moments of joy, strength, creativity, and splendor, as well as episodes of unhappiness, despair perhaps, turmoil, and cruelty. Your present convictions will act like a magnet, activating all such past issues, happy or sad. You will choose from your previous experience all of those events that reinforce your conscious beliefs, and so ignore those that do not. The latter may even seem to be non-existent. As mentioned in this book, the emerging memories will then turn on the body mechanisms, merging past and present in some kind of harmonious picture. This means that the pieces will fit together whether they are joyful or not. The joining of the past and present in that context predisposes you to similar future events, for you have geared yourself for them. Change now quite practically alters both the past and the future. For you, because of your neurological organization, the present is obviously the only point from which past and future can be changed, or when action becomes affected. I am not speaking symbolically. In the most intimate of terms, your past and future are modified by your present reactions. Alterations occur within the body. Circuits within the nervous system are changed, and energies that you do not understand seek out new connections on much deeper levels, far beyond consciousness. Your present beliefs govern the actualization of events. Creativity and experience are being formed moment by moment by each individual. Now, you must understand that your present is the point at which flesh and matter meet with the spirit. Therefore, the present is your point of power in your current lifetime as you think of it. If you assign greater force to the past, then you will feel ineffective and deny yourself your own energy. For an exercise, sit with your eyes wide open, looking about you, and realize that this moment represents the point of your power through which you can affect both past and future events. The present seen before you, with its intimate physical experience, is the result of action in other such presents. Do not be intimidated, therefore, by the past or the future. There is no need at all for undesirable aspects of your contemporary reality to be projected into the future unless you use the power of the present to do so. If you learn to get hold of this feeling of power now, you can use it most effectively to alter your life situation in whatever way you choose, again, within those limitations set by your creaturehood. If you were born without a limb, for example, your power in the present cannot automatically regenerate it in this life, although in other systems of reality you do possess that limb. Exterior conditions can always be changed if you understand the principles of which I am speaking. Diseases can be eliminated, even those that seem fatal, but only if the beliefs behind them are erased or altered enough so that their specific focusing effect upon the body is sufficiently released. The present, as you think of it, and in practical working terms, is that point at which you select your physical experience from all those events that could be materialized. Your physical circumstances change automatically as your beliefs do. As your knowledge grows, so your experience becomes more fulfilling. This does not necessarily mean that it evens out in any way or that there are not peaks and valleys. Each aspiration presupposes the admission of a lack. Each challenge presupposes a barrier to be overcome. The more adventurous will often choose greater challenges and so in their minds the contrast between what they want to achieve and their present status can seem to be impossible. In each case, however, the point of power is the present, and from that moment you choose which you and which world. 